Hello guys and welcome to my first ever Pokemon Nuzlocke. So this of course is episode 1 and I've never done a Nuzlocke challenge before but it's something that I've always wanted to do and it's just seemed a bit intimidating to start with. There's a lot of rules to, to get used to. Um, so what I've actually decided on going with is Pokemon Fire Red but this is not the original Fire Red. This is actually a ROM hack. So this is Pokemon Nameless Fire Red. Now the reason that I've gone with Nameless Fire Red as opposed to the standard Fire Red is because Nameless Fire Red has a built-in Nuzlocke system. So that is going to make it a lot easier for me to not have to concentrate specifically on maintaining the rules for the Nuzlocke because the game is going to be doing that for me. So it's already going to know if I've caught a Pokemon on a specific route so that I know that I'm not breaking any rules. I want this to be as legit as possible. Um, I haven't randomized anything, but the Nameless Fire Red version does include uh, every Pokemon up until the end of Gen 6, I believe. So they've added in Gen 4, Gen 5, Gen 6. They've added in the physical and special splits as well. They've added in the moves uh, from Gen 4 to 6 as well. So it is a much more expansive game. Um, still set in the in the same Fire Red format, but a lot more Pokemon to choose from. Um, so for any of you guys who are not used to Nuzlocke or have never heard of Nuzlocke, I'm going to very quickly uh, tell you guys the rules basically that we're, that we're going to be following. Um, and I am going to include that in the description of the videos as well if you guys want to refresh on that. So I'm actually going to start the game and while I'm busy setting everything up, I'll, uh, I'll just explain the rules to you guys. So the two most basic rules of a Nuzlocke run um, are that any Pokemon that faints is basically considered dead. Uh, you must release them and put them into your storage system permanently. Um, and then you uh, you can transfer them to another game if you want. You can do anything like that. But basically, any Pokemon that faints is considered dead. So there you can see Lillipop on the screen. Obviously, a Gen 5 Pokemon, I believe, was introduced in Pokemon Black and White. So you can see that we've got a bunch of different different Pokemon um, that, that are going to be options for us. So, uh, so yeah, so any Pokemon that faints is considered dead. That's why this is an extra, um, an extra restriction on the run, an extra challenge. Um, then... You can only catch the first wild Pokemon that you encounter in any area. So say you head out onto Route 1, the first Pokemon that you catch or that you encounter is the Pokemon that you have to catch. If you miss out on that catch, if you miss out on that opportunity, unfortunately that's it. You've got to wait until you can head into a fresh area uh, before you're able to catch another Pokemon. So there's limits obviously what your team is going to be. Um, so you've got to hope for a lucky encounter when you're going into those areas and you've got to make do with the team that you have. If your team faints, it's game over. You'll see that in this ROM, here's our challenge options. So we've got Nuzlocke, level limit, difficulty and experience share. So for Nuzlocke, we're going to want to activate Permanent Death. So Permanent Death prevents fainted Pokemon from being revived, even at Pokemon Centers. Um, so we will turn on Permanent Death. Um, then Single Encounter. So Single Encounter only allows capturing the first Pokemon that appears on each new map. We do want that on. Then we are going to activate the Shiny Claws. So Shiny Claws allows the capture of Shiny Pokemon, even if another Pokemon has already been caught on the same map. So yes, if we encounter a Shiny, I think that that is so rare that... If we do encounter one, I want to have the option to, to catch it. Then Species Claws, just so that we can keep things varied for the playthrough. Species Claws stops wild Pokemon that have already been owned from counting as the first encounter on a map. So yes, we will turn on the Species Claws. Gift Claws, I think that we will allow ourselves to get Gift Pokemon. So Gift Claws allows Gift Pokemon to be obtained without counting as an encounter. Would you like to turn on Gift Claws? Yes. Um, and then, yeah, so that's everything for Nuzlocke wise. Level limit prevents Pokemon from gaining experience when they reach a level dependent on the upcoming gym leader. I do not want to turn that on. I don't want to be limited by that. With this being my first Nuzlocke, I don't want it to be insanely difficult. I want to enjoy it, but also have a level of challenge. So select the difficulty level for trainers. Uh, we've got easy, medium, hard, and expert. We'll just go medium. Um, experience share allows party members to gain some experience, even if they didn't battle. Now, I know that Pokemon X and Y introduced the experience share, as we know it, where it just goes between the whole party, and that made the game super easy. So I do not want to activate the experience share. I think we'll do it... Uh, the old school way if we need to level up pokemon we're going to be throwing them out first and we're going to be switch battling so as we can see we have the gen 6 starters so we're going to have chespin froki and um oh, what's its name the fox uh the fennec fox i remember i, I forget its name um let's actually just check there uh fennekin yeah so fennekin 
um, is the fire choice. And then we've got the water choice, good boy Froki. And I think that we are going to go with good boy Froki. Um, I really like him. Greninja is the coolest of the three uh, evolutions. And I think that a water type choice is going to be decent to go with because we're not going to get a rod until a lot later in the game. So I think that this way we know that we're going to have a water type in our team. Um, so yeah, I think we'll we'll go with Froakie. He is going to be Froggit. So yeah, play on Frog and Yogurt. I don't know. I like it. I think it's cool. So we've got Froggit the Froakie. And Gary is going to take his chest spin. And of course, he is going to challenge us. Another thing to note with the Nuzlocke is that if we lose this battle... Um, that's no, uh, that, that, that isn't a loss. It doesn't count as a loss for us. The Nuzlocke, as far as I understand, is that Nuzlocke only starts once you've received your first batch of Pokeballs. So when we get our first batch of Pokeballs from Professor Oak, that's when the Nuzlocke is going to truly begin. So let's Growl, see if we can drop his attack, first of all. So we are faster than him, just that we're not taking too much damage. So we are going to take four points of damage there. Let's Growl again. Drop his attack two stages, and then we're going to start attacking in on him, I think. Okay, so he is going to growl on us as well. Um, that's fine. I think let's just start pounding away at this guy. He is going to start tackling us too. Mm, I think we might be in for a bit of an issue. Okay, so our Froggit had an Orin Berry on him, which is awesome. So he has eaten that. It's brought us right back into contention. So let's pound this guy again. I wonder if he's going to have a berry on him. We've got to hope that he doesn't. So let's pound him again. Slowly decrease his uh, his health. We are in a bit of danger. I think the Chespin has got a lot more attack than what we do. I don't want to use Bubble because he is a grass type and he's going to resist that. So let's just see if we can pound him down to zero. Okay, so he's down to one health. I think we are... Oh, a critical hit. Oh, please don't let him outspeed us. We must have the speed advantage. Thank goodness for that. My word. Okay, so we, we survived that with one health. Frogger grows to level six. So we win our first battle. I'm super happy about that. And basically our first goal is going to be to go and get the special parcel for, our, for Oak or whatever it's called. Uh, Oak's parcel. Oh, he's actually in a, a, a cherish ball, which is pretty nice. So we're going to want to take the potion from this guy, another Starly. So let's just battle our way through here. Any grinding and levels that we can get will be great. Guys, this turbo button is insane. So let's grab Oak's parcel and take that straight back to him. Okay, so let's get our Pokedex and our first five Pokeballs. Now is when the Nuzlocke really begins. So we're going to grab our map from Daisy. And now I'm going to show you guys basically how this works. So we are now Route 1. Our first encounter is going to be a Poochiena. And that's a level 2 Poochiena as well. So I don't know if we... I should have probably healed up Froggit. So let's just growl to make sure that if we are throwing Pokeballs, we're not losing any... Or not losing too much damage. Or not losing too much health. So he is only going to be doing one damage at a time. So I think that a level 2 Poochiena should be able to stay in his Pokeball. If he does pop out of this, let's, let's throw one more Pokeball. It sucks that we've encountered a level 2 Poochiena. Yeah, so let's let's just risk a pound at this point and hope. I mean, he should be fairly bulky. Okay, cool. So he does survive one pound. And then let's throw another Pokeball. So we are already down to two Pokeballs, but that's fine because Route 1, we're not going to be able to catch anything else in any case. Okay, so we get our Poochiena. Nice. We'll just go Rar. Why not? Okay, so we have... Froggit and Rar. Maybe what we do is let's go back to let's go back to our mom and just rest our Pokemon up. We can never be too never be too careful. We want to start leveling up our Poochiena as well because we're only going to get so many encounters before the before the next uh, bef or before the first gym. So so yeah, we want to make the most of everything we've got. I would have loved to get a Starly, but unfortunately it's not to be. So I'm going to show you guys how the mod works. So basically now we've got a Pokeball. But now, as you can see, we cannot throw it. We only have the option to cancel. So because we have already encountered a Pokemon on this route, we can only basically defeat it. So the game forces us into following the Nuzlocke rules, which, like I say, is great. I don't have to think about that too much. Um, so, yeah. So let's go to the Pokemart. Let's see what we want to buy. We want to get a few Pokeballs whoop, just as a safety. So let's maybe get ourselves 10 Pokeballs, and then we'll get potions with the rest three potions 
and one antidote as well for in case there are poison Pokemon in the Viridian Forest. We don't want to go straight into our rival battle here. I basically want to come into this tall grass. Let's switch to Froggit so that we can get another encounter. Okay, so it's a Bunnelby. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So yeah, we should be able to quick attack this Bunnelby without an issue. We can actually do two quick attacks on Bunnelby without an issue. Ooh, critical hit. That's dangerous. Oh, we are risking this as well. But let's throw our Pokeball and hope that we are okay. We did get a Premier Ball as well. I don't want to use that on Bunnelby. I mean, a Pokeball should be okay for us. Let's hope. Perfect. Cool. We catch ourselves a Bunnelby. With it being a girl, let's just go with a Looney Tunes reference and we'll just go Lola. So Lola Bunny joins the team. Alright, so Route 2 and we've got our fourth addition to the team. Good boy Starly. I love Starly. So if we can hopefully keep Starly around and alive, um, to have a Staraptor on the team is going to be a, a, a really cool flying type. So I am thrilled to have Starly on the team. Um, I don't know what nickname we want to go for though. Um... Hmm, shall we call him, let's call him DFA, shall we? DFA, Death From Above. Cool, so we got our four Pokemon on our team. I think what we might want to do is just grind up these guys a little. So I'm going to grind them and I'm going to see you guys in a bit. All right, so before heading into Viridian Forest, we have done a bit of grinding. So I figured that getting all of our Pokemon to a base level 8, at least, should be enough for us to go through here without too much danger. So Lola, Rar, and DFA are at level 8. Froggit, a little bit higher. Uh, but it's fine, he's our starter. He's allowed to be a little bit OP. So obviously our first encounter in here is what's going to determine what we catch in Viridian Forest. So let's go immediately for this Pokeball. Ooh, a Paris. Oh, that, that could be pretty nice, actually. So, I think what we want to do is, we want to quick attack this. And hopefully it does not get too damaged. I don't know if I want to risk another quick attack or if I want to just throw a Pokeball. Maybe we just throw a Pokeball. Let's see if we then will get our Paris, hopefully. Because that could be... Okay, yeah, no, we're not going to. So, I think we're going to have to risk... Another quick attack. We should be fine. Please, RNG. Yes. Okay, so Lola is getting pretty low on health. Um, I'm going to throw a Pokeball. We've got to hope that Paris stays in this Pokeball. Awesome. There we go. Nice, 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 nice. I know that I'm not very creative, but Paris will be shroomy from now on. So while I'm making my way through the forest, I will be trading him up as much as I possibly can. Okay, so we get a TM. What did we just get? Infestation. Hmm, could be useful for our Paris at some point. We'll see. Okay, first trainer battle in the forest. Shroomy is not going to be able to take on Venipede. I mean, maybe we try. I mean, all it can do is scratch. Let's see. Oof. Okay, Poison Sting does a lot of damage against us. Okay, Venipede is down. Shroomy learns Stun Spore. Very nice. Sparta learns Sparta use Scatterbug. Let's send out DFA. DFA goes to level 9. Learns Wing Attack. Beautiful. So let's switch train Shroomy. So we'll just Wing Attack with Venipede. Gonna get rid of it. Bugcatcher Rick is defeated. Bugcatcher Doug is defeated. Oh, Bugcatcher Anthony. Player defeated Bugcatcher Anthony. Another one down. Player defeated Bugcatcher Charlie. Alright, so we're almost out of Viridian Forest. Not too much standing in our way. Um, we're in a bit of danger here, so I think that what we actually need to do is just let Froggart lead the party. Oh, there's a move to to here. So you can teach us Water Gun, Defense Curl, String Shot, Gastro Acid, Worry Seed, Sweet Tent, Sweet Scent, or Teleport. I mean, all of these are fairly useless. Maybe we just teach Water Gun to... Oh, Froggit can't use Learn Water Gun anyway. Nope, none of our Pokemon can learn anything from this guy. This is a waste of time. Okay, so we can take the Potion. Um, I think the Froggit should be fine leading the party. 
I hope I'm not going to regret this. So there's Wormpool. You don't want to change. Ooh, Surskit. Let's try and paralyze him. So he's not going to do much to us with Bubble. If we can lick him and paralyze him, we'll be in a pretty decent position. That doesn't want to work. So let's just quick attack him and get him done with. Alright, Froggit is level 13 and we've defeated Bugcatcher Sammy. So we are safe and sound. Oh no, it's still Route 2. So this patch of grass, we're not going to be able to catch anything. So basically what we have is our party to take on Brock. So I'm going to rest up our guys um, and then I'm going to do a bit of grinding. And then maybe we'll take on Brock to end this episode. Would you look at that, guys? It's our first evolution. So our Starly DFA has become a Staravia. So the grinding has definitely been paying off. So we are sitting with some fairly high levels. Uh, let me just take this from Lola. She's picked up a super repel for us. So Lola and Shroomy are on level 10. Um, Rar is also on level 10, I think. Let me check. Um, so yeah, so Rar is on level 10 as well. Um, then we have got DFA on level 14 and we've got Froggit on level 15. So I think that I'm going to take the risk here because we do have Froggit on level 15 and he has learnt Water Pulse. So with Water Pulse, I think we should be able to take on Brock's gym. So I'm going to head straight to the, uh, the Pokemon Center. Um, and what we can do is we can give these guys a couple of berries to hold as well. So if we... Give Froggit, what items do we have? I mean, we've got no hold items, but we do have berries. So, poison and waking up is not going to be an issue, I don't think. Um, confusion shouldn't be either. So, we will give Froggit an orange berry and let him... Or maybe we hold on to that orange berry. I'm going to take that back. So, we will first fight the, the fight before Brock. Okay, so I think we're going to want to do this first fight. That's going to give us an idea of what level we need our Pokemon to be at. So I think let's... Yeah, let's go for that. Let's just go straight into this first fight and see what we have to, what we have to deal with. Okay, so he's going to send in a Rog and Roller at level 10. So not super powerful. So we'll Water Pulse it. It is going to endure that hit. Okay, he's going to get a headbutt out on us. Hmm. Okay, then he's got a Diglett as well. I'm going to keep Froggit in. Diglett at level 11. So now I wonder if this is going to be an indication that Brock is going to be around those same levels. Let me head back to the... I really don't want to lose our Pokemon. So let's head back to the Pokemon Center. What level does Froggit evolve? He's going to yeah, we'll heal up twice. Why not? So, I mean, the Diglett was level 11. That's That leads me to think that surely Brock's Pokemon are going to be higher than level 11. So we might want to bring our guys to at least level 12. If we can evolve our Froggit as well, I believe he's going to evolve at level 16. So I'm going to do a little more grinding just to be on the safe side and we will take on Brock. So I will see you guys right now. So there we go guys, look at this. We got that little bit of extra experience that we needed for Froggit. We'll watch this animation in all of its glory. Beautiful to see. Froggit has evolved. We've got a Frogadier on our team. Awesome. I love the the these Pokemon in the old school sprite design. It's really, really cool. So yeah, so we have got Froggit up to level 16. We've gotten the evolution which I wanted, which is going to boost our defenses a little. Um, and this should hopefully help us to get through Brock without any casualties. So I'm going to quickly level up Shroomy and Rar a little more just to get them to level 12. Um, and then I think we should be okay. We're not going to want to bring DFA into the battle if we can help it because we are up against um, rock types. So yeah, so I wanted to let you guys see that evolution. We're going to just push these guys up a little more on their levels to make sure that we're fully prepared. And then we'll be taking on Big Man Brock. Alright, so I think that our grinding is done. I'm hoping that level 12 is going to be a decent, like, base point. 
for us to to take on Brock. I don't really know what level his Pokemon are going to be at. So hopefully between that and having Frogadier at level 16, we're going to be okay to take him on. Um, I mean, I'd ideally really not like to have any casualties. So, I mean, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I don't really know what to expect. Like I said, this is my first Nuzlocke. I don't even know what Brock's going to have with this being a different version of the game. So, so let's see. His Pokemon are all rock hard and have two grit determination. His Pokemon are all the rock type. Um, so yeah, it would have been nice if Paris had learned a grass attack. Or if we had a TM that could teach it a grass attack. But we don't have that, unfortunately. So that leaves him pretty much useless. So rock and roller in a heavy ball. Okay, so level 16 rock and roller... Hmm. Okay, so level 16 is pretty damn tough, let me tell you. So let's go with Water Pulse. He's going to survive it regardless. Because he is going to have Endure, obviously. Or Sturdy or whatever it's called. Okay, he is confused. Let's hope that... Okay, so he has got a Berry. What Berry does he have? A Lumberry, which is going to cure his confusion. It's going to use Rock Tomb on us. Oh. Okay, that's a fair amount of damage. Okay, so our Orange Berry is going to kick in. Okay, we want to make sure that we're getting rid of this guy. So. Let's. I don't know if he's going to use a potion. Should we use Water Pulse? Should we Quick Attack? Maybe we just go for Water Pulse. Okay, yeah, so he's going to use his potion. We're going to get rid of Rog and Roller. Okay, so far so good. He's going to bring in Amora. So Amora, Ice and Rock type. Do we want to change? Do we want to heal up Froggit? I don't know what attacks Amora is going to have. Let's say no. And hope that Water Pulse is going to do decently against level 16 Amora. So Water Pulse. Okay, so less than half health. Amora is confused. We've got to hope that Amora hurts itself in confusion rather than hitting us. Okay, perfect. Amora has hurt itself in confusion. It does have a berry that it can use. So it is going to use an orange berry. Um, we're just going to want a water pulse again. So it is going to use a potion. Water pulse should do decently against Amora, I'm hoping. Okay, cool. So it is going to one-hit KO. The real question now is... Okay, so his boss monster is now a tyrant. Do we want to change? I mean, we might... We might risk losing one of our Pokemon. But do we want to change and possibly paralyze it to make sure that we don't lose Froggit. And then heal him up so we can bring him in fresh. So I think we are going to risk Shroomy, dare I say it, because hopefully he'll be able to withstand a rock attack if, um, if Tyrant uses that. And we can then use Stun Spore to hopefully paralyze him. Oh my god, Tyrant has Fire Fang. Oh no! Oh Shroomy! Oh no! Oh, that sucks so much. Okay, now that leaves us in a bad position. Because now... Now do we just bring in someone else and... Let's bring out Rar, I guess. Because he's got Sand Attack, right? So if he can outspeed Tyrant, we can possibly lower his accuracy... So let's do that. Let's let's use Sand Attack and hope that we're able to survive whatever he attacks us with. Okay, so Dragon Tail, we don't survive. Rar is gone as well. This is insane. Um, oh my God, that's two of our that's two of our guys gone. Um, I don't even know what to do at this point. Do we? Let's bring in fresh Froggit if we can. Are we just going to get attacked again? We're just going to get smacked around here. So let's just use a potion on Froggit. Guys, this is bad. This is horrible. 
Dragon Tail again. Lola's gone as well. Oh my god. Okay, so we need to we need to outspeed this guy with water pulse. Confuse him. Clearly sand attack didn't help anything. Let's use water pulse and hope that we confuse this guy. How much damage are we gonna do? Half health, he is confused. Please attack yourself in confusion, please. He's gonna use hone claws. So his attack is going to rise and his accuracy is back up to 100% as well. Okay, so we need to hope that Water Pulse takes him out. That's 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 our play here. So Water Pulse. Oh my god, he's got one health left. Please, please don't attack us. Rock Tomb. And we're done then. Oh my god, we survive. Yes. Okay, the unfortunate thing now is that our speed has fallen. So are we still going to outspeed... Are we still going to outspeed this guy? We can quick attack, but that's not going to do nearly as much damage. So we need to hope that we can water pulse him. Did we make it? Yes! Yes! Oh, but we took casualties along the way, though. Oh, man, that sucks. Oh, I should have... I should have done a bit more grinding, possibly. So Froggit has grown to level 17. Okay, so that's good. I mean, at least we've got we've got our two we've got our two main monsters left. We've got our two main Pokemon left. We get the Boulder Badge. Um, oh, but man, that sucks. Okay, and we can now use Flash. So he's given us TM thirty nine. Oh yeah, and because of the the change to the to the way the TMs function in this game, we can use TMs as much as we like. So we're not going to lose them if we do use them. So that's pretty fun. But yeah, we have some fallen comrades, guys. Let's go and lay them to rest at the Pokemon Center. We're going to head into here. We're going to deposit our fallen comrades. Rar, Shroomy, and Paris. They will never be forgotten. So yeah. That's, that unfortunately is it. We will rename this to to the graveyard, sadly. But we have two guys who have made it. We've learned a hard lesson today is to make sure that... Yeah, we can do Y, R, D. We've learned the hard way that we've got to grind and that this, this mod is going to be super tough. So, gone but never forgotten. And we continue on with our two our two Pokemon. So I hope you guys enjoyed the episode, as sad as it was. But Frogger is still here, DFA is still here. And that's going to end it for episode 1. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode today. I know it's different from my Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know if you've enjoyed it in the comments down below. If you are new to the channel, please don't hesitate to subscribe if you want to see more. It really helps me out and I would really, really appreciate it. So until the next episode, hopefully with, uh, with less fainting, um, I'm going to bid you guys a farewell and say bye for now.